Hey, this is Pastor Jeff Daniel of Kingdom Light Church. Get ready for a destiny molding, destiny shaping, destiny transforming, and destiny impacting word of God today. Yes, because in Kingdom Light Church, you shall know the truth, and the truth will always set you free. Now, let's get into the word that will bring light to your life. God bless you. Hallelujah. This morning, we'll be looking at the parable of the prodigal son, which I have titled, When God's Love Covers You. When God's love covers you, there is nothing the enemy can do to harm you. Because God is bigger than the trouble that he brings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We read it from verse 11 all the way down. It's a little bit of a lengthy reading. So grab your Bible. Then he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, Give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeying to a far country, and they are wasted his possessions with prodigal living. That's where they got the word, the prodigal son. But when he has spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land. And he began to be in one, verse 15. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he spent and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. From palace to feeding swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the paws that the swine ate. And no one gave him anything. Isn't it, isn't it amazing that when you have money, People gather around you. At the moment you are broke, everybody deserts you. No one. The same people he took to the bar parlor. The same people he took to the club. The same people he took to different restaurants. They all abandoned him. But when he came to himself, thank God, he said, how many of my father's higher servants have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father. I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your higher servants. Because he recognized that even the higher servants in the house eat. They don't eat with swine. And so he was begging to be one of those servants. Verse 20. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was still far a great way off. His father saw him, had compassion, ran, fell on his neck, and kissed him. And the son said, he went with what he had planned, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. The father didn't look at that. But the father said to his servant, he just ignored everything the guy had rehearsed for years. Bring the best rope and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and the sandals on his feet and bring the fatted cow here and kill it and let us eat and marry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his older son was in the field and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music, dancing, music and dancing. So he called one of his servants and asked what this thing means. Why won't he just go into the house and find out? And he said to him, your brother has come. And because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted cow. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came, and came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, this many years I have been serving you. I have never transgressed your commandment. That's not true. And at, at any time. And yet you never gave me a young goat. That's not true. That I may have merry with my friend. But as soon as this your son, you never see my brother anymore, came here, who had devoured your livelihood 
with halos and key, you key the fattest fowl, cow for him. And he said to his son, you are always with me and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad for your brother was dead and is alive again, was lost and is found. It is right that we make merry. Eternal Father, this morning, oh God, somebody has been professing self-righteousness. Somebody has been saying things they shouldn't have said. Somebody has said, why me, Lord? Someone has complained. But they didn't know that from the very beginning, from the foundation of the world, you have made certain things available to them. And nothing can ever change your love for any man. Not what they do or what they don't do. Not what they say or what they don't say. Nothing will ever change your love. Your love covers each and every one of us, no matter where we are. It doesn't matter whether we are sinning. The Bible says, while we are yet sinner, Christ died for us. Lord, this morning I pray, oh God, that by the end of this service, somebody will recognize that all they've been saying is all bullshit. And come and reconcile with you once again. And say, Father, I am sorry. Thank you for your mercy, oh God. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace that has kept me. Because if not for the grace, none of us will stand. But for the mercy of God, we are standing this morning. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your love that covers us, oh God. Have your way in this service today. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just mind my language, okay? Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> You know, whatever we do, no matter how great your sins are, I want you to know that you can come back home. You can come back home. You can come back home. It doesn't matter what you have done in the past. It doesn't matter where you are right now. You can come back home. It doesn't matter what you have said in the past. You can come back home. The Father's arms are always stretched, waiting for you to say, I am sorry. God earnestly desire for us to know how to love one another. And that's why he went this route to explain this parable to them. We must first of all have a good understanding of God's love for us. Because if you can't see the love of God for you, you can't love another person. You must recognize that it was not your righteousness. It was not your goodness. It was not anything you have done right or did wrong that brought salvation to you. It was the mercy of God. And once you can recognize that, it will be easy for you to forgive others when they wrong you. God was giving us an example on how to follow his footsteps in our relationships, in our character, in our provisions, and of course, in our servanthood. Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 to be imitators of Christ as dearly beloved children. We all know how children mimic everything they see or hear. That's how God wants us to do. Mimic Christ. Be like him. Follow his footsteps. When we mimic God, especially on how we behave towards one another, the people will say of a truth, these are children of God. It was a, it was an explosion of character of what Jesus did that brought about Christianity. That made people to say, "Wow, these ones are Christ-like." They were just doing exactly as Jesus did while he was on earth. And that's why the believers were first called Christians. The parable of the prodigal son is the character of a forgiving father whose love covers us. The story is a picture of God the Father. It's a picture of God the Father. The story tells us how the Father waits, watches eagerly for his son to return. He never gave up on the son one day. He never. He was sure, 100% sure, that this boy will come back home. I don't know about you, what do you think about God? 
For it is the goodness that brings the prodigal son to repentance. The boy remember how servants were treated in his father's house. He remember. Do you remember where God picked you from? It's a question you and I must answer today so that we'll stop being judgmental. So that we'll stop being what we are not. He remember. Romans 2 verse 4 say, do you despise the riches of his goodness? Perseverance and lost suffering? Not knowing that the goodness of God leads to repentance? Do you think it is because you are all that correct that you met God? All you need to do is just think back to the day of your salvation, the day you accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And then you will know that it isn't because you were all that that God called you. But somehow his goodness, the message he has shown, the love he has shown towards you, pulled you to God. And that is how you embrace Christ. And so when you see somebody doing whatever they are doing, don't, don't be too quick to judge them. Don't be too quick. What a picture of God's love and grace. God's heart is full of compassion for his children. I don't know of any father or mother who do not have a good heart towards their children. You know, the Bible says, if you have been evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. Even the most disobeying child, parents still love them. They still pray for that child. If you can do that, think about God. Because whatever I see happening with me, I first of all put myself in that place as a parent and I said, how do I treat my children? If I see they're going through stuff, how do I feel about it? That helps me to know that whatever is happening to me, that is God, God feeling much more than I felt for my children. No parent will see a child going towards a cliff and will say, let me allow him fall before he will rescue that child. Why do you think God will allow you to crash? Why do you think God will not reach out to grab your hand and say, my son, that place is not good to go to. He's ever faithful. He wants to show up and he's not ashamed to tell the whole world that it belongs to him. If you have your Bible, let's look at the story in Esther. I know we know this story very well, but I want to point out something in this book today. Esther chapter 1 from verse 1. Just, just to point out something, how much God valued us. But a lot of times, when we read this story, every one of us see Esther. None of us see what the king did. But I want to tell you what the king did today. Because the king has a different perspective about the situation, even though Queen Vashti refused. And that's what people will look at and say, she was dethroned so that Esther can rise. But I want you to know that God did what, the king did what he did because he wanted to show up on the beauty that God has put in Vashti. Now it came to pass in those days of Hazazarus, this was the Hazazarus who reigned over 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia. In those days, the king sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Sushan, the Citadel. The citadel. This is the third year of his reign, and he made a feast for all his officers and servants, the powers of Pesha and Mendia, the nobles, the princes, of the province being before him. And when this verse two. What verse am I? Verse four. My Bible flips. <laughs> and when he showed the riches, when he shows the riches of his glorious kingdom and the splendor of, of his excellence majesty for many days, one hundred and 80 days in all. Can you imagine half of the year, all that this king was doing was just showing how much God has blessed him. Showing how much he had for his kingdom. 
showing everything he can do. Verse 5 says, And when these days were completed, the king made a feast lasting seven days. Seven days feast. He did everything. Seven days. And then finally, showing his generosity, as verse 7 said, in accordance with the law, the drinking was not compulsory, for so the king had ordered all officers of his household that they should do according to each man's pleasure. What this king did was that every drink has its own vessel separately. If you use this glass for drink number A, when you want to drink another bottle, they brought another glass for you. You never use the same glass to drink throughout the night. And then you were not forced to drink. Just like you were not forced to come to God. God will wait patiently for you to come to him. Verse 9 says, Queen, Queen, Queen Vashti also made a feast for the women in the royal palace which belongs to the king. On the seventh day when the heart of the king was married with wine, he commanded his seven unions who serves in the presence of the king to bring the queen before the, to bring the queen before the king, wearing her royal crown in order to show her beauty to the people and officer, for she was beautiful to behold. What the king did here, that a lot of us has interpreted differently, some said, well, he wanted her to come out naked. That is not it. What the king wanted to do was to show her up. Just to show Look at what I have done. Look at the beauty. It's like God bragging about you. Say, look at my daughter. Look at my son. Have you seen Job? Have you seen how Job served me? He was bragging before the people about the beauty that God has placed in humanity. He wanted to let them know that you are created differently. You are a priceless original. There is no type of yours. Nobody is like you. You are unique all by yourself. God was about to brag about you before the devil. God is about to brag about you before the enemy. God is about to brag about you before the congregation. God is about to brag about you before your colleagues. That do you see, even though you earn the same salary, have you seen what she wears? Have you seen what he wears? God is bragging about you because you are a child of God. God is bragging. He's telling the devil, Uton, look at her. You thought that sickness will kill her. You thought that problem will cave her in. But look at her today. She's still standing. God was bragging. God was bragging. God was bragging about you. I want you to know that every day, the devil goes before God and say all manner of things. Where you have gone wrong. Where you have done, done this. Where you didn't do this. And what God is saying. Did you see Jesus on the cross? Did you see what my son did? To rescue her. To rescue him to myself. Did you see that? Did you see that Satan? And that's why the Bible says he ran about like a rolling lion. Because he doesn't know which one is for God. And which one does not belong to God. Like a rolling lion looking for whom? to devour. But I want to promise you my brothers and my sister, you will not be the number. You will not be among the number. You will not be on that statistics that the enemy can destroy. You are unique. You are a priceless original. You are different. You are a child of the king. You are a child of the king. And because you are a child of the king, don't let anybody tell you anything different. You are unique by yourself. And so, when she refused to show up, the king got angry. I said, if she had known what I wanted to do with her, she would have come. That was why she was the throne. God's love covers us, and he wants to show us up to the world to see his prized possession. The Bible says in Jeremiah 33, verse 1, the new revised standard says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. God has never diminished in his love for you. God has never withdrawn 
a bit of his love for you. He has loved you. He has continued his faithfulness. Even when you were not faithful, God has continued his faithfulness for you. The prodigal son was satisfied to return home as a servant. But to his surprise and delight, he was restored back to the privilege that he had even before he went and squandered his father's possession. Lesson number one from the prodigal son. God does not always get in the way of our desire. That's where, that, that's where his free will is. You are free to desire anything. God is not going to get on your way. You are free to imagine anything. God is not going to get on your way. He's going to allow you to go, but let me tell you, while you are going, he's watching you behind. Because he's a good father. He's a good father. He's like a child learning to walk. When that child wants to take that step, the mother is guiding to make sure the child doesn't fall badly. Can the mother stop the child from learning to walk? No, because it's necessity for that child to walk. And so he will just, she will only just help. It's possible. Sometimes, I remember those days, they will have a little, um, like a trolley for the child to hold so that he can walk with it. All of that is to prepare the child for the journey ahead. And so you can desire anything. God is not going to stop you from desiring. But why you desire those things, remember. I want you to know that in the culture where this proverb, or rather this parable was told, there was something that was very, very important to know. And if you don't mind, please go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse 15. Just two verses, 15 and 17. Because this son was the younger of the two. But this was the law of the land then. If a man had two wives, he loves one but not the other. And both bear him sons. But the firstborn is the son of the wife he does not love. When he wills his property to his sons, he must give the right of the firstborn to the son of the wife he loves. He must not. He must not give the right of the firstborn to the son of the wife he loves in preference to his actual firstborn. The son of the wife he does not love. He must acknowledge the son of his unloved wife as the firstborn by giving him double share of all he has. That son is the first sign of his father's strength. The right of the firstborn belongs to him. Let me paraphrase. For example, a man has two wives. And these two wives, they both had a son. They, you know, normally when a man marries two wives, he always will love one more than the other. I don't know why. You know? It's just, it just natural because there is no way you just love two women at the same time. It's not possible now. So he lost one. The, the one he married, the, the first wife, probably he didn't like that one. That's why he went and married the second one, isn't it? Because if he loves her very well, why go to another one? And so when he married the second wife, they both have children. But somehow, because God is God, the first wife he didn't love, gave birth to the first son. And the Bible here says that when it is time to distribute your will, you dare not say because I love your mother so much and then the son that is the second, you go and give him more, more property than the first. No, he said you must give double portion to that son, or to the first son, even though he's from the woman you never want to see. That's what the Bible says here. So it is important that in this distribution, the first son must have, a, must have practically everything. That's what it means. And here is this stubborn boy, the prodigal son, going to his father. And what that means in this culture is that this guy shouldn't even be alive. Because for wishing his father dead while his father was still alive. The man has not retired. The man was still active. And then you went to him. You have the audacity to go to your father while he's alive and healthy. 
and say, divide the portion that belongs to me. In the Oriental culture, that was death for this young man. That was death. But the father gave him everything. He said, okay, go. And that is why the father knew that this boy, if he can do this, why am I alive? It's not going to be too good for him out there. So he was waiting every day, knowing that this boy will come back home. No matter what, you will, free will. God will always give you that free will to do whatever you want to do. But while he does that, he still makes provision for you to come back home when outside is inconvenience for you. Just like us. It doesn't matter how a child is. We will always want that child back home. And whenever we see them back home, we rejoice with them. Say, oh, wow, it's so nice to have you around. Even though you wish he was not around, but you still want him back home. Point number two. Sometimes we want things before we ever get ready for it. This boy was not ready to handle wet. Just like some of us, there are some prayers we are praying, we are not ready to have what we are asking for. And God is watching and said, if I give you this thing, you will destroy yourself. I can't give you a million dollars at this time. When even the five hundred dollars I gave you, you were not faithful with it. And so we should be careful what we pray for. So that when you don't get answer, you are not frustrated because you think the father doesn't love you. He cares so much for you. And that is why he has not answered you. He's waiting for you to mature. He's waiting for you to grow. And so when you don't get what you want, check yourself. Say, what am I praying for? What am I asking the father for? And that will help you. Because this guy got so much wet, and so he went out and squandered. And he didn't have anything. He has to be eating what was meant for the pigs. May that never be our story. In Jesus' name. Lesson number three is that not everyone is happy about your spiritual growth. You know, Jesus, as Jesus was telling this story, I want you to know the kind of people that were in that audience. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law. These are the thick, thick ones. That uh, everything they... Because they think they have done everything right. These are, these are the people that represent the prodigal son. They will fight everything. The Pharisees, they were faithful to the law. They kept every letter of the law perfectly, so they think. In their eyes. Everyone who was not in that group was not, was not even qualified to be saved. As far as they were concerned, salvation was never meant for those people. It was meant for them alone. So these were the Jews. These were the people that were hearing the story. And they were getting so frustrated and angry. And another thing I want you to know, because of time, God is always looking, he's always waiting, he's always watching for you to come back home. He never gave up on you. He never gave up on anybody. He's always waiting and watching. He knows that one day you will come back to your senses. The Bible says he came to himself and then he said, this is what I'm going to do. Thank God for this young man that decided, you know what, why am I dying here in hunger when even servants in my father's house have enough to eat and to spare? And then he came to himself. Not too many people will come to themselves, but we are privileged if we ever came to ourselves. And so he ran back to his father. But the Bible says, but why he was still a long way off? The father saw him. That's to say that the father has been waiting. And he was filled with compassion for him. He was like, oh, this boy. I told you, you will bring this, you bring shame to us. He ran to his son, threw his arm around him, and kissed him. He kissed him. Even though the boy was looking so dirty, he kissed him. Let me tell you what would have happened to this boy before the father went and looked for him, before the father caught him. Deuteronomy, where we read just now, verse 21, uh, chapter 20, 21 and verse 18. 
of where we read before. If a man has a stubborn and rebellious son, like the prodigal son, who will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and who, when they have chastened him and not heed him, then his father and his mother shall take hold of him and bring him out to the elders of the city, to the gate of his city. And they shall say to the elders of his city, this son of ours is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Then all the men of his city shall stone him to death with stone. Can I get uh, three guys? Can I get three men? I want to show you something. Three volunteers, please. Three guys who can volunteer. Three. The youth. If you are not doing anything, they are come. What? Thank you. I need two more. This guy that plays on the piano for me. Come, come. With your glasses, come. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Come, come. Stick on, stick on. Amara, let him come. Guys, stay here. What? Is that you? Thank you. Let me stand over there. God bless you. You look like the prodigal son, but you are not the prodigal son. <laughs> Stay there. Okay, this is what happened, you know, before the father intervened. Let me borrow myself as a father, okay? In the rent, rental culture, what it means, like we saw just now, what the guy is, what those, these young men are supposed to do, they've been looking out every day when this stubborn, not this man who, when this stubborn prodigal son will return home. And by the culture of their society, he was supposed to be stoned to death. And so they are waiting at the gate. These guys with their stones in their hand, waiting at the gate. They wait until the day this guy will return home. We will kill him. And so when the Bible says the father ran, you know those days, by that master, he's not supposed to run. When the Bible said the father ran, what the father was preventing was that these guys at the gate will kill my son. Even though he has had issues back out there, and he's trying to come back to beg for forgiveness, these ones were not going to listen to that. They were going to kill him before he gets to his father. And so the father that is why the father was always on the window watching out for the day the son will return. And when he saw him coming, the father has to run before he gets to this point where he will be killed. And then he grabbed him. I said, this my son was lost. I have found him. Now I'm going to take him, cross this gate, and bring him to my palace. And this guy were like, what is this man doing? We are supposed to kill him. Why is he taking him? And the father said, before you touch him, you have to kill the father first. He said, follow me, son. Follow me. You are safe. Nothing can happen to you now. Nothing can harm you anymore. I have redeemed you. And the father crossed that gate. That is the reason why the father ran. It wasn't that, okay, and not even, no. The father was preventing death. These guys, we would have, they would have thought they are doing the father a favor if they killed him. And the father knows that is the culture. Nothing would have been heard against them if they have killed him. And he said, I will not allow it to happen. Is it not exactly what is happening to each and every one of us? Thank you, guys. God bless you. Thank you. That is what is happening to each and every one of us. Because we always believed that we can escape. But God is saying that if I don't go for you, you have no escape route. If I leave you to yourself, you will kill yourself. And so the father took him. I don't know who is after your life. 
I don't know what is waiting to take a, make you a snare and kill you. I don't know what is after you. Who wants to destroy you? I don't know. But I want you to know one thing. God the Father is waiting. He said, that day you came to me and answered the other call, you become my property. No harm can come to you. No evil can come to you. I will rescue you. I will hold you. And I will make sure that nothing ever happened to you. He's constantly waiting, brothers and sisters. He's constantly waiting and watching to make sure. No wonder our sister said, yes, that vehicle Boom, hit her. And then she hasn't had to move. It was the father that was directing the steering. Several times, several times, near accident I've had in this series. Every time I escape, I say, the father just make a plan for me. He just made a plan. Just made a plan. We are taking our daughter to UC sometimes ago, about a month ago or so. And a vehicle and it was raining. This big vehicle was coming behind us. He didn't know everybody had slowed down. It was coming right behind us with speed. And I saw him on my rear mirror. And I said, if I stay where I am right now, it will be a different story. I don't know from nowhere. No, this, every vehicle was just on that line. There was no space. But somehow, God created a little escape. And I just moved to my right. As soon as I moved, the guy did this, see who to hit. He moved his hand to the left and hit at the pavement. And I came back and come through our front again. Cross another vehicle, cross another vehicle, into the bush. God just spared everybody. Mercy of God. Mercy of God. And so when you travel and you came back home, you go to work and came back home, don't think because you know how to drive. It's the mercy of God. The Father is always waiting. He said, nothing can happen to this one. This one belongs to me. This one was in church yesterday. This one cannot be touched. We are a touch non people of God. That is the reason why you are alive. Not because you are smart. Not because you are smart. It's the mercy of God. The Father's love covers each and every one of us. And because he covers us, I can never be a victim. In the name of Jesus. Let us rise as we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Father's love covers us. The Father's love covers us. Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for your love, oh God. Even when we mess up. Even when we didn't measure up, oh God, by any worse standard, Father, you still loved us. Your love still covers us, oh God. We are grateful to you, my Father, for what you have done. We are grateful for sparing us, oh God. Every day, every day, sometimes we travel at 12 midnight, sometimes at 11 midnight. Father, somehow we go on that road and we come back home. And so we are, if we are not careful, we begin to think, okay, we are very smart. Father, we thank you. We are grateful, Lord. We ask for your mercy this week, oh God. Mercy upon every man, upon every woman, upon every child. Mercy, my Father. Some people just going out on the sun, and you hear about heat wave, heat, heat, and they are down. But here we are, oh God. No bad news. No bad news, my Father. Lord, we thank you for keeping us healthy. Thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you for being our God. For you alone is worthy of our praise. We glorify you. We celebrate with you, my Father. No wonder you threw that big feast and said this son was supposed to be dead, but he's alive today. This one was not supposed to make it home, but you spare his life. Let's celebrate. And unfortunately, the other son didn't recognize that. That is what the Pharisees will do. That is what the religious people will do. They will not see your goodness, but they will only see how you spare people and they get angry. Lord, I pray, O oh God, for your favor upon every man. Have your way in our life this week, O oh God. In Jesus' name.
Amen. God bless you. Thank you guys so much for listening to this message. We do hope you were truly blessed by it. Please don't forget to like this video, comment, subscribe, share with people, friends, family, colleagues, everyone around you. And also don't forget to turn on your post notification bell. It's right here so that you can get notified whenever we post a video. Thank you guys so much once again and do have a blessed week. Bye-bye.